that he can work. We can, he can work in her. In the city of David. City of great kings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for her people, her children, her ancestors coming home. Lord, we want to bless her today with kindness with blessings coming through her gates that those that come in will honor her, respect her. Lord, they will come declaring the goodness of the Lord upon her streets and her gates, Lord. Lord, they will come expecting the new anointing, the revelatory realm. Revelation opening up to her. How wonderful, how wonderful you said it is to be, to walk on her streets, to walk in her cities, to declare her beauty, and to enjoy her land. All the stories that's ever been told, Lord, has come from her awakening. Awaken, awaken. Awaken, O Jerusalem, unto your God, unto your God. How many have not been to Israel? Put it up high. How many of you want to go? You that got your hands up. You really, man, I'd have both of them. All you got to do is get excited and jump up and down and say, Lord, I have been and I need to go. Come on, you need to jump up and down and say, Lord, I need to go. What do you think? Don't you think I need to go? I'm going to run down and get that passport. I'm going to put a few clothes in the suitcase. Come on, don't burden yourself down. And you're going to make a way for my feet to go. There'll be sounds of joy and clapping in my heart and in my life. The Bible calls Mount Zion the joy of the whole earth the city of the great kings. He said the word of the Lord would go forth from Mount Zion. The word of the Lord would go forth from Jerusalem. So what do they have over there now? TBN. They star. That's the word of the Lord going forth out of Israel. And you want to be a part of it. You got to make it the hope of whatever you do, you're going to go there. Stop going out to eat for a little while. Don't buy those things you think you need. Make a few sacrifices. And for goodness sakes, you can't go without a passport unless God translates you there. <laughs> How many have a passport? Now, you've got to talk like this. Now, Lord, it's in your power to get me there. Even if it's by hook and crook. <laughs> if you have to take me like Jonah by the way of the whale, we'll get there. <laughs> That's what I said to him one morning. Lord, it's May the 12th. It's almost the birthday of Israel, and I haven't been to Israel this year. What do you think about that? I got up that morning and said that. That afternoon, I go to church here, and a sister sitting on the end of the bench where I sat said something to me about Israel, and I thought, did she say she wanted to take me to Israel? Now, I don't want to be too fast here. So I go over there and I said, you want to go to Israel? Yes, and I will pay your air flight if you will take me. All I had to pray was the land money. And so I thought, we don't just want two going, we need three. And somebody else heard about it. And God gave me enough spending money for all three of us. The $100 bills rolled in. We had a grand old time. Hallelujah. We walked the streets and ate off the streets. We saw all the places we wanted to see. We traveled up to Tiberias. We could have been baptized if we wanted it. But God had us there for 10 days. Took care of us beautifully. How beautiful are the feet of those 
The Bible says they're like the work of the hands of a cunning workman. He's prepared your feet to go up to Israel. But you have to want to go, and don't worry about the COVID. That's the devil trying to stop you. I went sleeping a few nights recently. And I got ready to go to bed night before last. I hadn't slept in, really slept well in days. And I said, devil, this is Ruth Carneal speaking. And I'm going to bed in a few minutes. And I'm going to sleep and you are not going to bother me. Do you hear me? That's exactly what happened. He came into my room in the night. Listen. I don't like to tell you these things. But he's after those that are doing something. He'll try to stop you with all kinds of noise. It was like somebody had a nail and was scraping down my window outside. But they were tapping it at the same time. And it woke me up. And I said, devil, you don't want to mess with me. And I don't talk to the devil very often. I don't. I don't give him any mind. But I will plead my blood all over, God's blood all over you. Yes. That's what I yes. said to him. I'll just plead his blood all over you. Well, I didn't hear any more from him that night. But he comes to interrupt your dreams and steal your dreams and steal those visitations and steal your rest to make you restless. And if you're doing anything for the Lord, I'm praying more than I've ever prayed. I'm praying all the time now. <laughs> just start praying in tongues. I just feel that need to call upon God. There's somebody in trouble. There's help needed somewhere. And you intercede. Intercede. And, and he knows when you're about, the greatest thing is about to happen to your life, and he'll throw all kinds of logs in your road to keep you from moving. And you're going to leap over them, honey. Don't worry about moving them. Just leap over them. Be a gazelle and leap over them. And watch God as he works the miracles for you. Oh, come on. He wants to call you darling, honey. He wants you to hear his voice. He wants you to know he's pleased that you've overcome. You've got the victory. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise you, Lord. And I'm telling you, we're in the last reformation of the Lord. I'm just going to throw this in quickly. We're in the last days of the Lord. There's only about three or four more prophecies that have not been fulfilled. And the Lord could come any time. I'm telling you this. And I know, I believe I'm right. We're right on the edge of time. And it behooves us all to put our affairs in order, put our life in order. Do whatever you need to do. Whoever you want to give something to, whoever you want to leave it to. Don't leave somebody to fight over it, war over it, and almost kill each other over it. Just let it go now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Get it in order. And then suddenly you say, I'm ready to go home, Lord. Put your hands up and he'll take you. Glory to God. We're that close to the coming of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. We're coming in the next dispensation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Have those hallelujahs in your mouth. Come on, you better start acting like saints here. Hallelujah. The wife is talking to her husband now. The husband's been talking to the wife and he said enough. The wife's talking to her husband. Hallelujah. What do you think, Lord? Ask him what he thinks about things. What do you think? Talk to him like he's in the room. What do you think? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, you want to find him all the time. We have some testimonies today. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm seeing a vision. Mm. Everybody put your hands up. In the name of Jesus. God, you're going to cover us with your blood, yes, with yes. your word, with your name. Yes. Hallelujah. With your spirit. You're going to cover us, Lord, that nothing shall harm us. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. You're going to put a new sound in the church, a new song in the church, new music in the church, new rhythms in the church, a new flow of your spirit in the church. We're going to see like Ezekiel saw. Lord, we're going to see like Daniel saw. Lord, we're going to see like John saw. And we're going to be able to describe it to the grace, the smallest detail of what you're doing because you're going to cause our eyes to see the glory of the Lord and what's taking place in the world, in the atmospheres. Thank you, Lord, for the revival spirit. Thank you, Lord, that we're going to be in it. And you're going to hear us call us by name and we're going to rise and shine and move forth to the victory, to the rhythms of the Lord and take the harvest that belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Miriam, come and share with us. She's got some burning testimonies. Well, all the time Sister Ruth's been talking about testimonies, I just want to jump out of my skin because I've had several lately, But uh, and I'm not here because I want you to see me. I'm here because I want you to be encouraged. Yes. Somebody needs this. I've learned so much, been in church all my life, Pentecostal or so-called, some of them forgot that's what they were, but I've been in church all my life and experienced a lot. When I've come here, I've learned so much. And one thing I learned was, Sister Ruth said, she puts her hand, has always put her hands on her head so her hair will grow, so she won't go bald. Well, I was going bald. I mean, my hair was coming out. I don't know why. I don't know why. So about a year or so ago, I started wearing wigs because I was embarrassed. I mean, I come from a long line of hairdressers, and I want my hair to look nice. But I started wearing wigs, and um, they were pretty too. But um, then one day, I, I took my wig off, and I thought, and I've been laying my hands, hands on my head. My hair thickened up. Yes, I can do it. Yes, yes and it's, it's not, I'm not falling in. I had it with me 
on the trip, on the Laguna Beach trip. So they didn't steal that. But after I got home, I was wearing that ring. Looked down Monday, one of the diamonds was gone. Well, that was terrible too. So anyway, but I put it away in a little bag, tucked it away. And um, so about a month ago, I was driving and the Lord said, I want you to get that ring fixed and get that diamond put in it. Okay, and it was just in my heart to do that and I never thought of that. I've, well, I'm not saying I didn't think of it, but I knew I couldn't afford that. So I went, um, so I said, okay. So I got the ring out, and I knew it would be around 600 or so dollars. And um, so I got the ring out, and I took it to the jeweler over by my, not too far from my house, and I said, um, how much would this be to get the problems fixed, and blah, blah, blah. And he said, um, 650. I said, can you do it any less than that? He said, well, I could do it for 600. And I said, well, is there a way I can pay for it? Can I pay it out or <laughs> whatever, you know? And so the lady told me that worked there, she said, um, he can fix it and we can put it on layaway and you can pay it out. I said, okay. So I didn't have to pay anything that day. So I left it. And I thought, oh, okay. Well, I felt like God told me, so okay. Now, this isn't about jewelry. This is about the Lord, his kindness, his graciousness, his love to us. So um, I went home. And I was looking in my closet. And I found $650. I didn't remember putting anything like that away at all, but that's what I found. So I got my pretty ring fixed. You found six hundred to pick for the ring. And it was, and with tax, it was six hundred and fifty-one dollars and some cents. So I just paid a dollar, a dollar and something. so much time, but I've got one more. Yesterday, I was at a little store, a second-hand store, and um, I saw a, I saw a washboard up on the wall, and I asked the lady, can you take that down for me? I want to take a picture of it. And I told her why I want to take a picture of it. Uh, someone that I have been working with, uh, somebody I know and love, actually, had seen this um, vision. I help people figure out what their lies are that Jesus needs to tell them the truth to. That's what I do. That's a, my prayer ministry, counseling ministry. And so the Lord showed her this beautiful picture that she was thinking some bad things about her and that she saw, and I, I just have to tell you this, she saw this, the Lord with this half, like a half a wine barrel with the brass around it and a washboard in it. And he said, I've washed it all away. Yeah. And it just relieved her heart. But I want you to know that Jesus has wiped all that, those lies and that stupidity that we think about ourselves. He's washed it all away. If you'll take it to him, he'll wash it all away. And he'll tell you you're clean and you're delivered and you're clear. And, and I, so I said to the lady, I said, do you want to know why I want to, want to take the picture of this washboard? She said, yes. So I told her my story. And she said something about God that made me know that she believed in God. We didn't think about Jesus. But anyway, so uh, I, she said, my mother was horrible to me. And, my, and she said, I took care of my mother and my brother till they died. And they both had brain cancer. And she had bad headaches back here. And I said, um, and she said, I, I, I don't think I was very good to them. And I said, would you, would you like to hear what Jesus had to say about that? She said, yes. I said, okay. I said, Jesus, and I called her name. I said, 
what do you say about that was she a bad person to her mother and i said you just listen to whatever you see sense feel or hear and i i waited for a minute and i said what's going on and she said he said i did a good job i was good i just want to encourage you Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, if anybody in this room has secret places and they don't know about it, let them find them. <laughs> Lord, let them find the finances, the miracle, the gift to go to Israel. As easily, Lord, as you had that ring taken care of, you know, he was wanting to surprise you when you said, he wants you to get the ring fixed. He was really going to show you how he could do it. If you ever had the Lord to have you to do something and it looks difficult, you don't really, your flesh doesn't want to wrestle with it. And all the time, he's wanting to show you the miracles of his ways. Anybody know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. You suddenly, suddenly you come into that place and it's like you've drank wine. Listen, you drink, you drank new wine and it's cause those lips that's been asleep to awaken. You know what I'm saying? A drunk person is just, uh, just all over the place. Singing because they feel so good. That's what happens when you're really intoxicated. You don't have any pain anywhere. Nothing hurts. But after it's over with, you got a big headache. But God's wanting to show us the way of the cross, the way of the heavenlies, the way of the now, the how he works. You've got to get this in your spirit and let your faith work and watch him do some great, great miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great miracles. Listen to this. I uh, don't spend very much money on jewelry. It's all been given to me. But I wanted a gold chain. But I wouldn't buy it. I just wouldn't buy it. Someone in the month of July brought me a chain. It's got to be 48 inches long. It hangs way down here. It's the thickest gold you've ever seen. And it has amethyst laid in gold hanging on the end of it. You saw it. And she said the Lord told her to give it to me because it would be like part of 12 stones he was going to give me concerning the breastplate yeah. of the priest. Wow. It cost some money. I mean, I wanted to give it back to her. I really did. I thought this is a great sacrifice. But the chain was great gold. I mean, honey. In fact, I don't know if I want to wear it or not. You know, it's bigger than I am. So... <laughs> God wants to give you miracles bigger than you are. Come on. Bigger than your faith is even considered. I got somebody back there who raped me off. Come on. You better believe he wants to do it for you. Truckload's coming. Hallelujah. Oh my, he's going to do what you've been waiting for. You haven't, you couldn't afford it, but he can. Come on, he can. He's got it all. He owns it all. He's in all the cattle, all the hills, all the banks. Everything's mine. I can do whatever I want with it. Isn't that wonderful? She was thinking she deserved. Yes, you think you've suffered a few things. Hallelujah. The Bible says he raises under the apple tree. It means he's raises up under the word, through the apple of his eye. And I want you to be encouraged to believe God for great things. Amen. Great things. Amen. And I talk to the Lord like I'm a child. Because he said, come like a little child. And I remember my rings, I've had three, 12 sets of rings put in offerings, 12 sets. This is one of them. It's a nice set of rings. And I remember I only had the diamond. And I said to the Lord, you know, I'm not being foolish. I'm just telling you how I talk to the Lord. 
I said, Lord, it looks kind of lonely. <laughs> it's really not showing off. It's worth. Can you see it? Can't see it, but that ring cost six thousand, seven thousand dollars for that. Whoa. Somebody put it in my offering. Well, I wore it and I took it off and I didn't wear it. So some lady comes in here and the Lord's where well, there was a word about something. I don't know what the word was. About letting go. Don't be afraid to let go. And she put two sets of these ring guards, and one of them had a big marquee in it. Some gold earrings and another set of rings. So I picked up this one piece and put this other ring in it, and I thought, oh, this ring is not lonely anymore. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't even sound wise. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't. God does. Listen, He told Peter that they needed to pay some taxes. He said, I want you to go down to the water. And the first fish that you catch will have the tax money in its mouth. Nobody will believe that story. I told Dee uh, the other day I got something from the IRS. But for about a month, I thought that IRS is going to send me a letter, but I don't know what for. You know, the devil will just play with you. Well, I thought, I didn't think I owed him anything. Because if you give enough away, you don't owe anything. And I remembered a letter came about four days ago, and I thought, oh my. Now I've got to wrestle with them. And I thought, Lord, I've burned so many papers and threw so much away. But I don't even know why they sent me the letter. It was, it was the way it was filed. And they didn't think it was filed right, but they checked it and it was okay. Well, why did they even bother telling me? I don't owe them anything. That's what they said. You don't owe us, and we don't owe you, and if it's okay, you don't have to call us back. I don't even know something. What was that about? I don't know. I don't even know what it was about. I didn't file the papers. I gave them to somebody who knew how to do it, a real tax person. If you want to be safe, take them to a tax person. And my friend always said to me, give them a little extra, keep them happy. <laughs> But I had the feeling something was going to come. See, you know these things, so God prepares you. You feel. And it's the same way with miracles. Yes. You feel the yes. miracle coming. You yes. understand? And so when I feel like the things are going to get testy, I just give more away, Richard. Yes. I feel like things are going to not go right. Give more away. You'll be amazed at how much it covers you and God. Yes. Just do something. It's a sacrifice. Something you haven't wanted to do. But do it. I know a great preacher, and I'm going to let you go on this. I know a great preacher. I had a dream about him. You all know him, but I tell you who it is. I had a dream about him, and I went to my pastor. I said, do you think this could possibly happen to this person? And I told him what I saw. It was in the millions of dollars. It was $15 million in the dream. It was part of the dream. He said, well, I don't know. Well, Ruth's doing better than Brother Heflin did, and she kind of, she asked him about it. He said, well, he didn't know. But there really was $15 million involved. He gave T.D. Jakes his property worth $15 million. And he had the government to come up against him, and it was for the silliest reason you've ever heard. And he made a great big sacrifice for God to cover him. Right on the corner of a highway, that building that T.D. Jakes is in was given to him by a friend of our ministry. And it's worth $15 million. That's a sacrifice. Any of you believe that's a sacrifice? Yeah. Yeah. Probably more than all of us have in this room. Because I'll guarantee you, if, you had, if I had a million dollars, you wouldn't see me here. I'd be over in Israel. I'd buy my way over there. I'm serious. But God knows what keeps us in line. He knows what will form us to what he wants. And many times he'll whet your appetite with a few things to get your attention. But then, listen, listen to me. And after you find, listen, after you get that great thing that you've been wanting, you will find that the treasure you have in your heart all the time 
was greater than anything that could be given to you in the natural. How many understand what I'm saying? I've come to the place whether I, if I have money, it's okay. If I don't, it's okay. There are secrets I have learned of the Lord that have changed me. And I know that I know how to touch Him. And I know how to put my life in order. Put things in order that will move the hand of God. You understand? There's things you could do that will move the hand of God. Of God. And this man, I don't want to talk too much about him. He's got tremendous gifts. But the devil went after him to steal everything that he had. But he gave TD Jakes. And then I didn't even know for sure if he had. I'd had the dream that he had. And TD Jakes mentioned it. He mentioned his name. He said, When so and so gave me this property. And I went, oh, It's true. I knew that what I saw was of the Lord. And I prayed for him. And Sister Ruth went after him to rescue him. She was good about that. We had a lot of people we brought and rescued and helped, motivated them, got them started again. Put rings back on their fingers. There's a scripture in the Song of Solomon. My beloved comes with rings of burl. You want to hear something? Ask him, where is your ring of pearl? I did. And he gave me one. That's a yellow diamond. you got to ask him. Just that, Not that you want it, but I just, I said, Lord, if you're giving away rings of pearl, where's mine? I'm just talking. I didn't really, I was serious, but I wasn't. You understand? I thought, well, if it says that, it says, it says, my beloved comes with rings of pearl. And I thought, well, he must have one for me. I said, where's mine? And I'll tell you, a lady walked into my meeting and gave him one. And I sewed it, and I kept sewing it, but I kept getting more diamonds back. So this is my last one, I think. He might ask me for it, and if he does, I'll give it away. That's not a problem. And he will. He'll let you know. You'll see it. It'll be on your mind. You'll see it on somebody else. That ring of pearl, I saw another lady's face in that ring one day when I looked at it. And I took it and gave it to her. I didn't give it to her just because I saw. I wanted to know what God was doing. That ring was worth $1,500 and she had sold her original wedding rings for $1,500 to go on a mission trip. And God gave her another ring worth $1,500. It's all in the plan of God. You understand? It's not just getting and giving and carrying on and, oh, he's got something more. I mean, he gave you that money. It's something else God's doing. Now lift your hands and I'm going to release the blessings from heaven. God, I thank you that you said you would show us the riches of your, you would show us the wealth of your glory according to, to the riches that we have in Christ Jesus. Now God, I believe you to balance the books today. Put everything in its rightful place. God, if we've been faithful to pay our tithes, if we've been faithful to help and to give, you said prove me and see if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing Ooh, I just saw pie come through the window. Chess pie. Cream cheese. Cheesecake. Woo, I just saw it come through the window. He wants you to taste and see that he is good. And his mercies are forever. Dare to believe him as you make that sacrifice. And watch and see what the Lord will do. Are you listening to me? Watch and see what he will do for you. Don't be afraid to let go. Don't think it's fine. Let it go. I'm telling you, there are ways to move the hand of the Lord. I remember that I gave, I sacrificed a dress to a girl once, and she gave it to somebody else, and I said, Lord, I haven't even paid for that dress yet. I sacrificed it. She gave it to somebody else. Here's the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help me, God. A lady came that owned silver mines. 
And she brought me $400 dresses that I didn't even know how to wear. I'm telling you the truth. I gave them away because I, I put them on. I thought, this isn't me. Well, I wouldn't, you understand my nature didn't go with those clothes yet. They were from Germany, the most beautiful clothes you've ever seen. But because I let that dress go and I hadn't paid for it, she brought me the most, she bought these clothes at Dollars, gave them to me. This is when they made better clothes. I'm sorry to tell you that, Dollars. Beautiful clothes, you understand? We're talking about thousands of dollars worth of clothes. I gave them all away. Can you say, oh man, oh me, oh me, oh my, or something? Ouch, ouch. One more story. I wanted floors, new floors in my house, and I could not afford them. And I wasn't going to spend that much money anyway. I thought if I got that much, I could help the poor. And I remembered, raise your hand over here, Jill. Jill comes, I'm going to tell on you. She comes walking in one day, and she said, I'm coming to your house to help you with your floors. And I turned to Dee. I said, did we say anything to her about my floors? How does she know about my floors? I said, when did, when did we mention it? Did I talk about it while we were speaking? She said, I don't remember. Well, I thought she was kidding until she and her husband showed up. So they came in and took measurements, and I thought, where's the money coming from? About that time, the government was giving money away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I get a letter in the mail with a nice check and it said Sister Ruth I'm sending you this because I think there's something nice you need to do for yourself something that you really want to do and you couldn't afford to do but this money is for you to have it done so take it and spend it on yourself and be happy so it was enough I can't go into too many details but I got enough to put the floor down and pay the workers too. Oh. And we're not talking about a small amount, it was a few thousand dollars. Amen. Now I wouldn't have spent that money before, you understand? I didn't take my book money and spend it. I've been sending that money to help people everywhere. I'm, I'm trying to encourage you, every week I do this. God wants to do more miracles for you than you're receiving. Do you hear me what I'm saying? And, and I'm not saying because you want them, I'm saying he wants to show you how he works his economy, how he wants to do it, because everybody has needs. You understand? Yes. Everybody has needs. I just finished using all the TP somebody gave me in the beginning. I had so much of it, it was on my back porch. Isn't that true? Remember? We came home and there was chickens, cooked chickens, food, water, fruit, all on my back porch. I thought, we'll never eat this. So we had to call the neighbors in to give them some. Come on. God wants you to be able to call the neighbors in and help the poor. I had so much milk. I had organic milk. Organic. And my neighbors and I hadn't really been on good speaking terms, and I called them over to the wall. I said, can you use this and can you use that? There's nine in the house. They had seven children. Come on. They can oh, yeah. use the milk and oh, yeah. big boxes of macaroni and cheese. Come on. God just knows how to open the floodgates. And if you get into that place, come on. Do some dancing before the Lord because you feel like it. Not because you want something, but because you feel this consuming God and you just want to praise Him. And you want to be like that girl in the Bible uh, that the, she was the stepdaughter of the king, but he said, please, when you're dancing, I'll give you up to half of my kingdom. Come on, think big. You know something? You're not thinking big. I can tell from looking at you. <laughs> Pull your hair out if you have to. Yes! Yes! I'm talking about get excited about the Lord even though he's not. You don't see anything. But oh, what a God I serve. What a God. What a God. What a God. What a God we serve. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. Come on. What a God. How wonderful, how wonderful. He says, oh, come all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. Worship the King. Worship the King. Come, let us adore Him. Come, let us adore Him.
come and listen. You want to see the extravagant hand of the Lord, not somebody who's only given a little. You want to see it open wide because your heart has been wide open for the Lord. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, you sopranos. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy on your head, on your body, on your ears, on your stomach if you need a miracle. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you, Lord. No one. There is no one else like you. I know it sounds silly, but nobody else has the heart to do it, so I'll do it. I'm at home doing this. I feel it in my heart just panting after the Lord. I'm not being silly, I'm telling you. You'll get to where you, you want him so bad. You're saying, Lord, oh, tear it out of me. Pull it out of me. Pull this thing out of me that wants to rejoice more. Oh, God, get glory. Get glory to your name. Come on, get the glory that's to your name. Get it out of me, Lord. Cause it to be released. Oh, let the heavens declare. Let the rafters ring. Oh, let there be a moving of joy that's unspeakable. Let the people come alive with the song of the Lord, with the delight of the Lord. You said to delight myself in you and you'd give me the desires of my heart. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm in Sprouse's. Now listen, I never walked by, I'd take my dog, I, walked, I used to walk my dog and I'd take him to where the grass was green for his little feet. So they had this green patch over at Sprouse's a mile from my house. And I took him over and walked him in the grass. And all of a sudden, I don't know where the lady came from. And she had a child in one of these little tiny, what do you call them, they wheeled children. And she, the child was too big for it. But sure. evidently she had to take the child with her. And it's Sunday evening. Now, I never go there on Sunday evening. But I felt like we felt to get, remember we felt to get a taco, and that's where that couple was. I, I don't like tacos. But God sent me there to help that couple. You understand? She had a hunger. <laughs> yeah. And so, listen. This lady walks up with this little child. She said, can you spare me a little money? She said, she said, I, I got $20, but I need more. I said, how much do you need? She said, well, whatever you want to give. I gave her 25 She had 45 I mean, you, you can't buy much for $20. <laughs> She goes in the store, and I thought, oh my goodness, how's she going to get home? Because the little trolley she had the child on, a little small stroller. Yeah, yeah a small stroller. Mm -hmm. And she comes back out. I walked the ball back around. I said, have you got a way home? She did buy the groceries. She said, yes, yeah, somebody's coming to get me. Praise God. So a week later, I go to Sprouse's again to buy some groceries. And I got everything, and it's coming down, you know, they're ringing it up. And I have my money all out to pay the lady. And she turns to me, and she said, your money is no good. <laughs> I thought, Lord, if they change this while I've been in the store. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought of, if they changed the money system. <laughs> 
And I said, what did you say? She said, your money's no good. It's paid for. Oh. And I'm wondering, who, who paid for my groceries? <laughs> I didn't see anybody. <laughs> and then I remembered I'd help the lady. You understand? That's it came to me. I'd help the lady. I thought, I need to do this more often. <laughs> I mean, that's really good balance. And, and, and make it a lifestyle. We're, we're tell all the people goodbye that's watching. Make it a lifestyle. Make it a lifestyle. You got to make it a lifestyle. Make it a lifestyle. We bless you in the name of Jesus. May all your needs, your pantries be filled, your shelves be filled, your refrigerators be filled. May you find favor with your neighbors. And, and favor at the grocery store. May you find all the sales and the right deals. Not that we think we're better than anybody else, but we are children of the king, and we're the king's daughters and sons. And that is your desire, Lord, for sons and daughters, that we're not handicapped nor limited, but we have more than enough that we can help our neighbors and those be on the other side of the wall and those behind us and those that are in need. Lord, that we have more than enough and we're not afraid to share it. And we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.